Sam agrees to extradition your news update, and we play with cars on this edition of Arbitrage News Weekend, starting right now. Hello and welcome to Arbitrage News Weekend for December the 24th, 2022. I'm Joshua Stark. Merry Christmas Eve, y'all. Sam Bankman fried told a Bahamian court Wednesday that he has agreed to be extradited to the U.S. to face criminal charges related to the collapse of cryptocurrency exchange FTX. The former FTX CEO appeared at a magistrate's court and is expected to head to Odyssey Aviation to return to the United States, according to a Bahamian news organization called Our News. Bahamian authorities arrested Bankman Freed last week at the request of the U.S. government. U.S. prosecutors alleged he played a central role in the rapid collapse of FTX and hid its problems from the public and investors. Elon Musk is defending his massive cost-cutting at Twitter as necessary for the social media platform to survive next year, due in part to debt payments tied to his $44 billion takeover of the company. This company is like basically you're in a plane that's heading toward the ground at a high speed with the engines on fire and the controls don't work, Musk told a late-night audience on a Twitter Spaces call Tuesday. That's after Musk said earlier on Tuesday that he plans on remaining as Twitter's CEO until he can find someone willing to replace him in the job. Musk's announcement came after millions of Twitter users asked him to step down in an online poll the billionaire himself created and promised to abide by. I will resign as CEO as soon as I find someone foolish enough to take the job, Musk tweeted. After that, I will just run software and server teams. Mark Zuckerberg, the CEO of Facebook's parent company Meta, took the witness stand Tuesday in a trial over U.S. antitrust regulators' efforts to stop the tech giant from buying a virtual reality startup called Within Unlimited. At issue is whether Meta's acquisition of the small company that makes a VR fitness app called Supernatural will hurt competition in the emerging virtual reality market. If the deal is allowed to go through, the Federal Trade Commission argues it would violate antitrust laws and dampen innovation, hurting consumers who may face higher prices and fewer options outside platforms controlled by Meta Platforms Incorporated. Meta, meanwhile, wants to poke holes in the FTC's argument that there even exists a distinct market for what the FTC calls VR dedicated fitness apps. What's a dust devil sound like on Mars? A NASA rover by chance had its microphone on when a whirling tower of red dust passed directly overhead, recording the racket. It's about 10 seconds of not only rumbling gusts up to 25 miles an hour, but the pinging of hundreds of dust particles against the rover Perseverance. It sounds strikingly similar to dust devils on Earth, although quieter since Mars' thin atmosphere makes for more muted sounds and less forceful wind, according to the researchers. The dust devil came and went over Perseverance quickly last year, thus the short length of the audio, said the University of Toulouse's Naomi Murdoch, lead author of the study appearing in Nature Communications. More after this on Arbitrage News. It's Thursday night and you're grabbing drinks with some friends. Start it off with a pitcher for the table, which quickly becomes two. There's pool. And there's the photo booth. All right, everybody, squeeze in. Say cheese. Followed naturally by an order of wings. And another. Can we get some extra ranch sauce? Then there's the ceremonial nightcap. So what are we doing this weekend? And lastly, it's back to the car, which, if you're buzzed... could be the most expensive night of your life. Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Nothing kills a buzz like getting pulled over for buzz driving, because buzz driving is drunk driving. 
Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. This week's arbitrage trade.com blog includes watch your step, digitally at least. Toys aren't just for kids anymore. <laughs> and it's electric, classic cars on the batteries. All this and more in this week's arbitrage blog, available now at arbitragetrade.com. Now let's go to the chief executive officer and chief elf of arbitrage. Mr. Royce Wells for more. Merry Christmas, Mr. Wells. Merry Christmas, Josh. How are you doing? I am doing wonderfully, sir. And uh, a lot Glad of to hear that. A lot of things we're going to be talking about this week are going to be kind of centered around Christmas and things that we want and that sort of thing. But uh, Ari apparently didn't get that memo. Yeah, that's okay. Hey, hey, on with the show. That's it, okay. That's okay. Uh, otherwise, we're breaking the Christmas in Memphis. Come on. Because, because uh, I mean, uh, she's talking about. Uh, well, she's talking about some very un-Christmas-like things, like uh, posting angry statuses on Facebook, and uh, you know, uh, the digital footprint in, in and as a whole. Uh, yeah, I mean, the season started off. People were talking about why are you posting Christmas stuff before it's even Christmas, right? Yeah, yeah. So like in October, they're like. Take down your Christmas. It's not Christmas. They're angry. Did you did you get angry online about that though? I didn't get angry per se. There were a few sorted words. Sorted words. You know, it, it's it's strange to me because you know, we, we both grew up in the genesis of what we now consider the internet, right? Yes, absolutely. Of course, those who are in the know know that it was military at first, and it was very hush-hush and that sort of thing. And it kind of just, you know, via colleges and things like that, it grew into what it is today. Uh, But the thing is, is that the things that are online kind of have a tendency to stay online, don't they? Oh, there is no pulling it back. Once it's out there, it is out there for good. Even that picture of you in uh, 2016 where you... Oh, never mind. We're not talking about that. It was barbecue fest. I don't know what happened. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, It's interesting, though, because, uh, you know, passive information and active information, you know, we put things out there, and there are things that are put out there uh, about us, and it can be kind of impactful and sometimes harmful, couldn't it? Um, more than just a little bit. Like companies look at uh, the stuff that's on social media and try and make and form opinions of a potential candidate they're trying to hire, or even look at uh, their current employees to make sure that they're not, you know, uh, not mentally unstable or may need help. So yeah, be careful what you put out there. What did you read from mine? <laughs> Well, he, he said in front that. of everyone, I'm not going to discuss it. But uh, your review later, we'll talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I need to go. <laughs> delete, 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 delete. Um, yeah, Too late I, for all that. It's out there forever. Well, that's the thing. That's the thing. When we, you know, when we first got to start, got started with you know social media and things like that, people were putting anything and everything out there. I mean, they were putting, you know relationship statuses and and how how this person hurt this person and that sort of thing uh, unfortunately it's still out there yeah also just this is a slight warning when you go on vacation don't post that you're going on vacation it lets people know that you're not home just you know public service announcement right yeah, there. yeah 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 just for the record we're both gonna be at home and we're both gonna be armed i'm just saying oh yeah <laughs> more after this on arbitrage news Hi, we're the Goo Goo Dolls. We're fortunate that we can give our daughters everything they need to grow and learn. But not every child can focus on classes and play dates. Nearly 13 million kids in the U.S. face hunger. That's one in six. School lunch might be their only meal each day, and it's heartbreaking to imagine any child going to bed hungry. We're dreaming of a perfect day when kids can smile, play, and just be kids without worrying about where their next meal will come from. Feeding America is working to make that perfect day a reality. Each year, the Feeding America network of food banks rescues billions of pounds of good food that would have gone to waste. That food is given to families and children in need. Being a kid should be about doing things that make an ordinary day extraordinary. Learning to play an instrument, building a sandcastle, hosting tea parties. Hunger should never be an obstacle to growing up. You can help end childhood hunger in your community by visiting feedingamerica.org. 
Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. The maker of the popular Fortnite video game will pay $520 million in penalties and refunds to settle complaints revolving around children's privacy and its payment methods that tricked players into making unintended purchases, U.S. federal regulators said. The Federal Trade Commission reached the settlements to resolve two cases against Epic Games Incorporated, which has parlayed Fortnite's success in the past five years to become a video game powerhouse. The $520 million covered in the settlement consists of $245 million in customer refunds and $275 million in a fine for collecting personal information on Fortnite players under the age of 13 without informing their parents or getting their consent. It's the biggest penalty ever imposed for breaking an FTC rule. Epic used privacy invasive default settings and def deceptive interfaces that tricked Fortnite users, including teenagers and children, FTC Chair Lena Khan said in a statement. Even before the settlement was announced, Epic said in a statement it had already rolled out a series of changes to ensure our ecosystem meets the expectation of our players and regulators, which we hope will be a helpful guide for others in our industry. The Cary, North Carolina company also asserted that it no longer engages in the practices flagged by the FTC. The $245 million in customer refunds will go to players who fell victim to so-called dark patterns and billing practices. Dark patterns are deceptive online techniques used to nudge users into doing things that they don't intend to do. In this case, Fortnite's counterintuitive Inconsistent and confusing button configuration led players to incur unwanted charges based on the press of a single button, the FTC said. Players could, for example, be charged while trying to wake the game from sleep mode, while the game was in a loading screen, or by pressing a nearby button when simply trying to preview an item, it said. These tactics led to hundreds of millions of dollars in unauthorized charges for consumers, the FTC said. Epic said it agreed to the FTC settlement because it wants to be at the forefront of consumer protection and provide the best experience for our players. No developer creates a game with the intention of ending up here, Epic said. During the past two years, Epic has also been locked in a high-profile legal battle with Apple in an attempt to dismantle the barriers protecting the iPhone App Store, which has emerged as one of the world's biggest e-commerce hubs during the past 14 years. After Epic introduced a different payment system within its Fortnite app in August 2020, Apple ousted the video game from the App Store, triggering a lawsuit that went to trial last year. A federal judge ruled largely in Apple's favor, partly because she embraced the app iPhone maker's contention that its exclusive control of the App Store helped protect the security and privacy of consumers. The ruling is currently under appeal, with a decision expected some point next year. More after this on Arbitrage News Weekend. Don't miss our very cool staff and family rendition of Twas the Night Before Christmas tonight, 6 p.m. Central. Back after this on Arbitrage News. Okay, so Sarah, I'm dropping you off at Emily's? Yep. And Josh, you're going to? Soccer, Dad. Soccer practice. Right. Oh, by the way, I just wanted to let you know when I pick you both up, I'll be wearing my short shorts. What? No! Yep, and my dorky dad hat, and I'm going to do my dad dance for all your friends. They'll love it! Seriously? Why? Because I like my short shorts. Of course, I could be talked out of it if you guys would just buckle up your seatbelts without giving me a hard time. It's important to get your kids to buckle up for safety, no matter what it takes. And sometimes, all it takes is your parental powers of persuasion. Okay, okay, we're buckling up. See, all buckled. Good choice. I'll just have to do my dad dance at dinner time. What, what? No! no! 
Do what you have to to make sure your kids are wearing their seatbelts, even on short drives. Never give up until they buckle up. A message from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Visit safercar.gov slash kidsbuckleup for more information. Okay, Royce, it's your turn. Yay. What's in front of you? Legos as far as the eye can see. And what's behind you? Um, more Legos. Yeah. Okay. So I have a confession to make. I am what you call an AFOL. A-F-O-L, which means adult fan of Lego. And I am not alone. Thank you very much. Unfortunately, I am here. <laughs> well, Lego has uh, has expanded their adult line since 2020. It now has... 100 sets that are officially uh, con- considered adult sets, including the Apollo 11 lunar lander that you see there, yeah. the bonsai tree, which everybody knows because we've talked about it before. Uh, not only that, but the Lego modular building collection that, yes, I am delving into. Yeah, yeah I, I will say this. It does look pretty cool once it's all assembled looks amazing but i just uh, want to know do you yeah. use a craggle with it no no craggle in this uh, building why not president business has no has no place in my in my collection I'm like, once it's assembled it's assembled right y- yeah but no oh. no no uh this is what we call a kid adult market it's kind of significant 18, eight, 18 and older represented 14% of all U.S. toy industry sales outside of sales bought for children. Um, and it grew 19% since the 12 months ending September 2021, according to NPD. Oh, wow. Um, That's impressive. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's growing. It's absolutely growing. Um Mattel's American Girl added more uh, added more to their line. Build a Bear has added uh, this what? thing called. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Build a Bear has added something called the Bear Cave for eighteen and over, highlighting items such as stuffed rabbits holding bottles of wine. I think that's pretty cool. Uh, so we got a puka, is what we're talking about here. Yes. And <laughs> do, you, uh, do you know what a pook is? Of course. Okay. Harvey and, you know, six foot rabbit. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Just making sure. Yeah. That some people, like, you know, what's a puka? And I'm going to leave our guests act, asking. So, yeah, that's right. what it is a six so, foot uh, imaginary rabbit. There you go. There you go. Harvey, uh, Harvey was actually a, a, a production I did in high school. So, yeah. Nice. Nice. Yeah. There you go. So some people say that the cat the catalyst for the trend has definitely been the pandemic, but uh, they have seen adults of all ages uh, using Lego. The trend goes beyond what we've seen in the pandemic. Uh, for example, did you know that there's an adult light bright set with okay. thousands of pegs and forty five LED lights? That's insane. It's only a hundred bucks, Royce. Run, Where? go Where? get it. Where? I don't know. We're gonna find it. All right. <laughs> but my daughters are gonna love it. Oh man! When they get to play with it. When they get to play with it. There we go. <laughs> this sounds like the PS Five. Right. All over again. Right. <laughs> Astro's Playroom. Let's go. So the adult, the adult toy industry. Uh, the toy industry itself has generated $38 billion last year. Uh, could definitely use some help from adults. Uh, the number of toys sold slipped 3%. So this is a trend that we kind of want to see grow. Yeah. Let's stay young. Let's stay kids at heart. There we go. Have a great weekend. We'll see you next no time. No word in the English language is less convincing than probably. Are you sure we should get matching tattoos on our first date? Sure. Um, We'll probably stay together. Probably? (laughs) It's been 23 minutes since I ate. I can probably swim. Uh, you should wait 30 minutes. Mm, Okay, now tell me what to do. Cannonball! (laughs) Cramp! Oh, I have a cramp. I can probably hit the green from here. Probably. Can I get a mulligan? Ready to go? Hey, are you sure you're okay to drive? Yeah, I'm pretty sober. 
Yeah, I'm probably okay. Probably okay isn't okay, especially when it comes to drinking and driving. If you're drinking, call a cab, a car, or a friend. Buzz driving is drunk driving. A message brought to you by NHTSA and the Ad Council. A U.S. French satellite that will map almost all the world's oceans, lakes, and rivers rocketed into orbit recently. The pre-dawn launch aboard a SpaceX rocket from Vandenberg Space Force Base in California capped a highly successful year for NASA. Nicknamed SWAT, short for Surface, Water, and Ocean Topography, the satellite is needed now more than ever as climate change worsens droughts, flooding, and coastal erosion, according to scientists. Cheers erupted at control centers in California and France as the spacecraft started its mission. It is a pivotal moment, and I'm very excited about it, said NASA program scientist Nadia Vengrova Schiffer. We are going to see Earth's water like we never before. About the size of an SUV, the satellite will measure the height of water on more than 90% of Earth's surface, allowing scientists to track the flow and identify potential high-risk areas. It will also survey millions of lakes as well as 1.3 million miles of rivers. The satellite will shoot radar pulses at Earth with the signals bouncing back to be received by a pair of antennas, one on each end of a 33-foot boom. It should be able to make out currents and eddies less than 13 miles across, as well as areas of the ocean where water of varying temperatures merge. NASA's current fleet of nearly 30 Earth-observing satellites cannot make out such sight features, and while these older satellites can map the extent of lakes and rivers, their measurement is not as detailed, said the uh, University of North Carolina's Tamlin Pavelski, who is part of the mission. Perhaps more importantly, the satellite will reveal the location and speed of rising sea levels and the shift of coastlines, key to saving lives and property. It will cover the globe between the Arctic and Antarctica at least once every three weeks as it orbits more than 550 miles high. The mission is expected to last three years. Lori Lation, the director of NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena, California, noted that while the agency is known for its Mars rovers and space telescopes, this is the planet we care about the most. We've got a lot of eyes on Earth, even with, with even more globe surveying missions planned in the next few years, she added. NASA and the French Space Agency collaborated on the $1.2 billion SWAT project some 20 years in the making, with Britain and Canada chipping in. Already recycled, the first stage booster returned to Vandenberg eight minutes after the liftoff to fly again one day. When the double sonic booms sounded, everyone jumped out of their skin, and it was exhilarating. What a morning, said Taryn Tomlinson, an Earth Science Director at the Canadian Space Agency. It's the latest milestone this year for NASA, among the highlights, glamour shots of the universe from the new Webb Space Telescope. The dark spacecraft's dead-on slam for an asteroid in the first planetary defense test and the Orion capsule's recent return from the moon following a test flight. In other space news, it could be the end of the red dusty line for NASA's InSight lander, which has fallen silent after four years on Mars. The lander's power levels have been dwindling for months because of all the dust coating its solar panels. More after this on Arbitrage News Weekend. Why was the basketball court all wet? Because the players kept dribbling on it. <laughs> the dad joke. Corny, grown worthy, but also one of the simplest ways to share a moment with your kids. What did the buffalo say when he dropped his son off for school? Bye, son. <laughs> so take a moment to make your kid laugh because dad jokes rule. Make your kid laugh today. Go to fatherhood.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. Adopt U.S. Kids presents What to Expect When You're Expecting. A teenager. Learning the lingo. Jelly. Jelly adjective. Jelly is a shorter, better way to say jealous. As in, 
Chloe, I am like so jelly of your unicorn phone case. You don't have to speak teen to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. Visit AdoptUSKids.org, brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Adopt US Kids, and the Ad Council. Royce, I think it's safe to say that we're we're two pretty cool gearhead guys. I mean, we like cars and yeah, we like electric stuff. Uh, you it's know, electric. You're you're a big fan of the Tesla, right? Oh uh, yeah, I you, think it's sexy. You could say that. Oh, I see what you did there. Yeah. Right. Right. <sighs> You no. know, I'm going to say this, and I'm probably going to get shot down for it, but um, have you ever noticed that Elon's kind of a big kid? And, hey, it takes imagination to run a company. Right. Got to be able to see it before it's there. So, yeah. Right. Got to be a big kid. You're a big kid, too, right? Yeah. I mean, you know, I think we're both I'm big I'm a big kids. kid now. Ah. Uh, so anyway, yes, sir. Electricity, <laughs> uh, electricity. I like classic cars and things like mm-hmm. that, and it, it's uh, it's really a neat thing to see what people do with classic cars, um, restoring them or what they call resto mod. Resto mod is a, a way that you can uh, put modern creature comforts or more reliable pieces into a classic car. Yeah. This so. sounds like our previous segment, Legos, but much bigger. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> there we go. So we have the the article at, at uh, arbitragetrade.com forward slash blog about uh, some people who have been, instead of uh, resto modding gasoline engines into a classic car, they will get a junked for example, a Tesla S, and start putting parts from it into a into say a, a uh, this gentleman has a Plymouth satellite. I mean, nice. If you think about that, that's a large, large car, and you know you can buy the cars pretty cheap these days. And if you can find, let's say, a crashed Tesla S with you know dual battery packs and a dual motors that you know run 636 horsepower yeah sounds like a win-win to me well what it is is it's a trend right oh yeah so there's a there's a michigan-based company that does uh does classic cars uh as evs i have seen a volkswagen bug i've seen a classic porsche 911 there All right, has, I'll take one of those right? under the tree stat. Right. There has been um there has been the classic Ford pickup that has been turned into a an EV, but it just keeps growing. Uh and as far as as far as seeing this grow, it's only gonna get bigger. Uh because you know gas motors they're they're kind of going out, aren't they? Uh yeah, yeah they are. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. electric but for good reason, I think. Yeah, yeah, and electric Have you seen vehicles. The prices? Yeah, electric vehicles. You know, for the most part, they're growing. So we'll see how this goes. Uh, I know that uh, I know that I want to kind of preserve my vehicle, but. Uh, if you give me a 65 Ford Mustang with a EV, I mean, yeah. Yeah, I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll take it in a heartbeat. As a matter of fact, you have a great weekend and a Merry Christmas from Arbitrage. Don't forget, Twas the Night Before Christmas comes up tonight. 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 Arbitrage Trade Analytics, LLC, is a privately held market research company. Arbitrage Trade Analytics, LLC, is solely responsible for the preparation and distribution of the content of this podcast. The opinions offered in this podcast are for informational purposes only and are not intended to be investment advice. Seek a duly licensed professional for investment advice. For more information about the informational research and services offered by Arbitrage Trade Analytics, LLC, please visit Arbitrage 